Let's talk about the Brooklyn side of that blockbuster trade that sent Macau Bridges to the Villanova Knicks with New York Post Nets beat writer Brian Lewis, because personally, I think GM Sean Marks is up to something big. Brian, thanks for uh, hopping on with us. Uh, five first-round picks, a partridge, and a pear tree for Bridges. Uh, Sean Marks initially said that he wasn't really going to trade him, but he ultimately did. He got a great price for him as well. So what are you hearing about how this trade ultimately came together? And what are your thoughts on it? Well, that, that, there's a lot there to unpack. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a good price for a guy who is a standout role player but has never been an all-star. As a matter of fact, they got one more pick for him than they did for Kevin Durant. I mean, so to put that in perspective. Um, but Mikhail Bridges has been a guy that has had a lot of value around the league, right? They had already turned down four firsts from Memphis. They had turned down an offer from Houston for some of their draft picks back. Um, and they waited. I don't think they wanted to trade Mikhail, but this offer from the Knicks had been on the table for some time. And it was pretty obvious that Mikhail was more than happy to go across the East River and wanted to be a Nick. So I think in the end, it got to the point where they had to determine, all right, this works for us at this point. If he's not necessarily 100% on being here, and this is the value we can get for him. And each window, let's call it that, each trade deadline or each summer that Mikhail stayed in Brooklyn, his value goes down. Mm. Because part of his value is attached to the fact that he had a great team-friendly contract. So at this point, it didn't make sense to keep him any longer than they had. You either had to commit to move him or commit to building around him and trying to find another star. And they could not find another star to go with him. So that means moving him. When you break it down like that, I tip my cap to Sean Marks, being able to get the value for this player that he did. So now that the trade is is, is official, you think the Nets are going to take those f five first-round picks and go full rebuild? Or do you think they're going to flip the script and, and use them to trade for some win-now type help? Oh, I think it's definitely the former. I think this is a situation where you're going to go and tear it down and rebuild. Now, that means you're going to be bad, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Uh, but the deal that they made with the Rockets to get control of their 25 and 26 picks that had gone out in the James Harden deal ensures that you will at least benefit from being bad, right? Now, whether that's Cooper Flagg or... or Dylan Harper or Ace Bailey, uh, you know, the next great young French kid that's coming up, whatever, you will ensure that you will at least benefit from being bad and be able to tank, even if they don't want to use that word, but that's what they're doing, and that they'll be able to get a high-end talent. They'll get a higher-end talent out of those picks than they will out of any of the Nick picks in all likelihood. So rebuild is the new tank. Uh, we hear trust the process throughout Philly all the time. You think Brooklyn fans will trust the process with whatever the next front office decides to do? Uh, that's a loaded question because here's the thing. You can't necessarily say net fans, right? Because net fans are not a monolith and they don't agree on anything, right? You had net fans that you know, blamed Kyrie for the way the big three disintegrated. You had other net fans that uh, blamed Joe Sy, the owner, and Sean Marks, the GM. So they don't agree on that. You had, for some inane reason, which I still can't understand, you had net fans arguing Mikhail Bridges versus Cam Thomas as if somehow they weren't teammates, right? So net fans don't necessarily agree on a lot of things. Uh, I do think there was a large segment of the net fan base that thought you need to pick a lane, mm -hmm. right? And we think that lane is to rebuild, is to tank, trade away whoever you have to, and rebuild from scratch. Those net fans, I think, will be very happy 
with this result. Now, of course, the Nets have to do the right thing with these picks and draft well. But if they have shown one thing, well, they've shown a number of things. One, they can't necessarily be trusted to keep their stars happy and in-house, at least not yet. But they have shown that they draft exceptionally well. So that's what you're going to have to trust that they'll do. And I think a large segment of their fan base actually will trust that they will draft well now that they have a ton of picks to do that with. Well, I'm preparing myself for another long season in Brooklyn this upcoming NBA season. But, uh, Brian Lewis, thanks for uh, taking time out of your day to jump on with us. Oh, anytime. Appreciate you having me.